season. Ben trying to win his first regional championship. And Ben's leads look really familiar to what we saw earlier on the broadcast. It is going to be the Hatterene and the Ndidi, while Wolf will lead with Amoongus and Landorus. Yeah, I think both the leads make sense from both players. you got to get the psychic train down immediately. Uh, NDD can help make sure Trick Room goes up because Hattering doesn't look too safe here. It isn't vulnerable to a spore because of magic bounce, but as a fairy type does not want to take a sludge bomb from Landorus, and if it were to trastalize into a fire type does not want to take an earth power. So that's a little bit of a guessing game that can get diffused with this follow me, which yep. just makes sure that Landorus' offense goes into that direction, but it does stymie Ben's momentum once this Trick Room goes up. Landorus will use sludge bomb into that NDD slot. Oh, a double sludge bomb into that NDD slot right there but trick room is safely set up right now so hatterene being able to do its job indeedy being able to do its job trick room while indeedy protects that hatterene yeah wolf may be hoping to catch uh ben knowing that he's trained to be able to take a sludge bomb from landorus but not being able to take two sludge bombs if indeedy had not used follow me there the double up might have been able to pick up the ko instead it redirects both moves and indeedy is not asleep so able to move on this turn and it's time for the expanding forces to start note right now there's no torkoal and had to stay on the field and so that steel trastalization can help give landorus some staying power uh, i wouldn't be surprised to see it come out immediately yep it looks like there will be terrestrialization here. It is going to be the Amoongus to terrestrialize. Going to become the water type right here, uh, shaking off that psychic weakness that is most likely going to be hitting the field at this moment as Landers will use his turn to protect. Doesn't want to take too much damage here and wants to be able to stick around and survive the turn. Indeed, he contends to just go for another follow me, protecting the partner Hatterene as now Hatterene will use expanding force does connect into that Amoongus, but again, thanks to that defensive terrestrialization, does not take super effective damage here. It still does 50%, so that's still a pretty strong one, but Amoongus will be able to get out of KO range because of its Citrus Berry. Yeah, so a terrestrialization that probably plays longer term dividends for Wolf. Both gets away from a weakness to expanding force into a neutrality and a weakness to eruption into a resistance. Landorus just protects itself for the turn. Amoongus taking just over 50% from that expanding force, but enough to activate the Citrus Berry, which means it should be safe from the next expanding force, and NDD now asleep. And now two turns of that Trick Room are going by. This is the kind of timer that works against Ben. He hasn't been able to get Torkoal on the field to have that extra damage double up, or some other way to make sure and bust through this Amoongus on this turn. If Landorus is actually bulky enough to take an expanding force, then this could be a really good damage trading turn for Wolf. Hatterene will use expanding force again. Connects into both Pokemon. Amoongus hangs on. Landorus hangs on. Here's Amoongus using a spore, just trying to cover that Indeedee switch as Indeedee will take its turn of sleep here. Its first turn of sleep as Landorus now will now be able to take its attack. Does use Sludge Bomb into that Hatterene. Super effective damage. Gets the one hit KO. So big damage being dealt here. A big offense threat over on Ben's side of the field removed. But again, this is now an opportunity for Ben to be able to switch in another, like, basically another sweeper. Yeah, but it's a good damage trade for Wolf. Gets a KO and burns a third turn of Trick Room. When you can take a positive damage trade during one of your opponent's turns of Trick Room, that is the best thing that can be happening for Wolf. You can see the pressure that Amoongus is putting on. By putting NDD to sleep, it's not able to assist uh, the... Hatterene in this spot, and so it just goes down to Sludge Bomb, but Amoongus is also able to continuously spore that sl slot. It meant there couldn't be uh, an early aggressive switch in of the Torkoal. Now there's only a couple turns of this Trick Room left, and it's going to be hard to reset it. Uh, NDD has been heavily damaged by double Sludge Bombs and is now asleep, only having spent one sleep turn. Unlikely to be a second Trick Room in this game, uh, and so Ben's going to need to make the most possible use of this first one. Urshifu comes on the field, it can help pressure Landorus to make sure it can't just protect this turn, but it can also just get spored itself. It's not slower in this Trick Room than, uh, the, Amoongus. The, than the Amoongus. So yeah, Urshifu takes the field here for Ben, but uh, it, not, not, not out of the woods just yet. It needs to be able to possibly dodge a, an Amoongus Spore. Indeedy will switch out though, will reveal Ben's final Pokemon. It is going to be that Torkoal will bring out the Sun, but again, uh, it could be a dangerous switch here as Amoongus will be able to spore anything as Ben will terrestrialize. It will be that Urshifu. That Urshifu will become a grass type. So that's one way to dodge that spore, uh, just becoming immune to it because of its new grass typing. So how is this Urshifu going to deal with these two Pokemon? Amoongus contended to go for a sludge bomb in that Urshifu slot. Big damage, but Urshifu will hang on. Here's the Wicked Blow. Urshifu knocks out that Landris. So uh, some damage being dealt, but again, Urshifu paid quite a price. It took a lot of damage there into this final turn of Trick Room. Yeah, Ben's team is looking weakened, and 
if there was infinite turns of Trick Room ahead, you'd be just looking at these wicked blows and eruptions and saying, well, that's plenty of damage, that will get it done. But there are not infinite turns of Trick Room left. There is one turn of Trick Room left. And Wolf is going to be able to get to the other side of it. He can use double protect here and only make sure and take one attack. Torkoal won't be able to do any damage, and then it will be his turn to go out on the aggression. The sludge bomb call that Urshifu would drastalize means a lot of damage come in. It means that you don't have to worry about Urshifu just taking a hit and dealing a hit back once you get out of this trick room. Could have punished even more heavily by going for a spore on the Torkoal. He threatened that on earlier turns, but if you continue to just fail spores, it would have given Ben a possible chance back into this game. Yeah, of course, with the Unseen Fist over on that Urshifu side, uh, the Protects could be punished, but most importantly, you will not be taking damage from this Torkoal, which is going to be a, a monster under the sun here. Tornadus will protect itself. Again, does not want to take any attack from this Torkoal. Amoongus will also use this turn to protect as well, wanting to preserve it for the next turn and operate outside of Trick Room. Torkoal opts for Eruption, locking itself into that because of the Choice Specs item into the Troop Protects, but now Urshifu will be able to hit one of these Pokemon, possibly get a knockout on that Amoongus, or just try to get some damage down onto that Tornadus, and most importantly, break that Focus Sash. Yeah, I think that's the smart targeting for Ben here. Uh, if, if Amoongus gets KO'd, we've seen the Flutter main on Wolf's screen that would come back in, it would see like so much damage being pressured. But now, uh, these Pokemon are both extremely low. Tornadus is going to be the first to act, but if your first action is Bleak Wind Storm, nothing is a given, but both do both lock hit. in. That's the KO on Urshifu and Torkoal damage. Torkoal should be slower than Amoongus, absolutely is slower than Amoongus with that speed drop. Yeah, so we saw that Wolf will be targeting that Torkoal with a Spore. There is still the Indeedee in the back for Ben, but that Indeedee is taking a nap. Uh, it has taken a turn of sleep, so it does have options to wake up, but again, the speed advantage in Wolf's favor with this Tornadus is so important. A Bleak Wind Storm will just be able to seal the deal here as long as they connect. Wolf does have the option to use Rain Dance in order to make the Bleak Wind Storm's 100% accurate. Uh, as well as taking away the sun that Torkoal really enjoys operating in. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see exactly how Wolf closes this game. He's at such an enormous advantage that it would take a lot going wrong uh, for Ben to have any avenue back in. Uh, and so it'll just be Wolf trying to find what is the safest route to confirm his win here. Yep, and, and Tornadus will use Rain Dance here to set up the, those 100% accurate Bleak Wind Storms. Amoongus uses Sludge Bomb, will connect in that Torkoal. Torkoal hangs on, but Torkoal will take another turn of sleep here uh, as Indeedee is going to remain asleep. So it looks like it's going to be wrapped up one Bleak Wind Storm away. Wolf, one game win away from making it to the finals. Yeah, Indeedee could have woken in there, but there was nothing great to wake up into. If you wake into Trick Room, you just have a Torkoal Choice Specs locked into Eruption. In the rain. Almost no health in the rain. He might, it'll be able to pick up the KO on Tornadus with the Focus Touch, but not deal with that Flutter Main in the back. And ultimately, that Flutter Main was Wolf's insurance policy to just win that game. I think Wolf did a really great job of keeping Ben from ever being able to get the momentum that he needed in that Trick Room with the targeting that he used in the first turn, he forced Indeedee to stay on the field and follow me. If it doesn't stay on the field and follow me, then Hatterin goes down to a Sludge Bomb double up. But once it stays on the field uh, and goes for that double Sludge Bomb, then it's a vulnerable point. Uh, he can put a Spore into that spot. There's no way for Ben to get two attackers on the field. The Indeedee has to go to sleep. And then the Trastalization on Amoongus means that Amoongus has the staying power to take two Expanding Forces. Mm -hmm. And once it takes two Expanding Forces, that's when things start to shift back into Wolf's favor. Ben runs out of Pokemon that are faster in the Trick Room than the Amoongus. Uh, and the Amoongus takes control of this game in the same way that we saw Wolf use it against that much softer Trick Room team earlier on in the day. Yeah, one thing that kind of hindered Ben's ability was just that Indeedee opting to provide that support, just taking turns of sleep, just staying out on the field, not really being able to do anything. You really want your sweepers in after that Indeedee. But every single turn of that was absolutely mm -hmm. forced, right? Wolf uses double sludge bomb. Indeedee must protect. Wolf puts a spore into the Indeedee. Well, Torkoal can't switch in there or it'll be Torkoal asleep. Indeedee put, or Wolf puts another spore into the Indeedee. Well, once again, Indeedee cannot switch or it'll be Urshifu or Torkoal asleep in that slot. And so Wolf kind of trapped the NDD on the field during those turns and made Ben waste that time uh, without capitalizing fully on his trick room. I think there's one moment in there where things definitely take a different path through the game. 
um, the Urshifu came in and used its Trasalization to get away from Spore so the Ben could continue to pump out offense, um, but it stayed not the slowest thing on the field, mm -hmm. wasn't able to get multi-hit KOs, and the timer kind of ran out. I wonder if things would have been different with Torkoal coming on the field, but it would have had its own set of problems because the Landers would have just been able to protect itself and extend that time through Trick Room. And here we go, game two here at the semifinals of the Orlando Regional Championships. Indeedy and Hatterene leads for Ben, not changing anything at all, not changing anything all, at all on Wolf's side either with the Amoongus and the Landers here. How is this Trick Room setup going to play out differently this time in order to be advantageous for Ben, or is Wolf going to continue to be able to stop Ben from being able to switch things in? Yeah, Wolf has no reason to change anything. That play of double sludge bombs is so safe for Wolf. It really does force a problem. If Hatterene had protect so that it could protect itself while Indeedy Trick Room, then there'd be some risk to the play for Wolf. But it doesn't have it. Uh, it, it, it could switch. You could try to have Urshifu take that damage. It'd be a lot of damage. You could get Trick Room up that way. Um, but it's, it's just the exact same Follow Me play. We're going to see a repeat of game one, turn one. Indeedy uses Follow Me. Landers opting for an Earth Power here. Hits in that Indeedy does good damage here. Uh, Amoongus will follow up with a Sludge Bomb in that slot. Indeedy hangs on again as Hatterene will use his turn to set up Trick Room. So Indeedy a lot more damaged this time around than last time, but again, in the same position. I think that was actually somewhat dangerous for Wolf. If NDD had been poisoned by a sludge bomb there and gone down, it would have been- Can't be poisoned because of sheer force. Uh, it was the Amoongus using oh, the Amoongus sludge bomb. Using sludge bomb. Uh, That's right, yeah. And so uh, the tor would have given a free entry ramp for the Torkoal, but NDD hangs on, is in the same little trap. Uh, Wolf changes up his move selection in case it had been a switch in. Or Shifu or Torkoal trying to come in and take those sludge bombs would have just gone down to an Earth Power sludge bomb, double up, and further forced the follow me play. That really kills Ben's momentum. Uh, really, again, wouldn't expect to see Wolf have to change anything up here. The set of moves that he made in game one gave Ben so few options. Even if Ben knows that's what's coming, he's got to do something, and so that's an immediate switch. Spending one of his turns of Trick Room, getting into the, getting the Hatterene off the field and Torkoal on. Yep, Torkoal will take the field here as the Hatterene will retreat, not going to stay in like last time. It looks like Wolf's uh, Amoongus will Trasalize again, becoming that water type that is so vital for this Amoongus to be able to stick around. Doesn't want to take a Psychic Terrain boosted expanding force at all. Wants to stick around and kind of just be a pest towards Ben's team here as Landers continues to use Protect. This is playing out exactly like it did in game one for Wolf's side. As Amoongus will use Spore here, it does land into the Indeedy slot and will put it to sleep. Yeah, Wolf really not being forced to change anything about his game plan. It is such a safe one. Ben being forced to make somewhat risky plays. I mean, switching Torkoal in here could have been a Spore that slot, but also it means that Torkoal comes in and is trying to use Eruption into a Water-type Amoongus. It really threatens that Landers spot a lot better. Where Landers was able to take one Expanding Force, I don't think it will be able to take one Choice Specs uh, Eruption, especially if that's a Terra Fire Eruption, um, which could just shift the momentum plays in here just enough. Ben will switch out Indeedy. Important to note that Indeedy has taken one turn to sleep, so it does have an option to be able to wake up the next time that it moves. Hatterene switches in here as Landers will switch out. It will be the Tornadus to take that Landers here. Tornadus does have that Focus Sash, so it will be able to take this one, uh, you know, Choice Specs boosted, Sun boosted, Eruption, and well, hey, you, you want some more damage, Lund? Throw on that Terrastalization boost as well, as Torkoal Terrastalizes into the Fire type to give itself more offensive firepower here with this huge eruption. We'll bring that Tornadus down to the Focus Sash. How much damage is this going to deal to the Amoongus? That does a lot of damage, but again, that Terrastalization is paying off so much here as Amoongus hangs on and will be able to eat up its Citrus Berry to heal back up to over 50%. Yeah, it does a lot of damage to the Amoongus. It does enough damage to, I think, really do what Ben needed. Oh, it's the Sludge Room. It's not a Spore. Torkoal's going to be able to continue hit. to attack. A critical hit, somewhat impactful there. But now, both of these Pokemon are in Expanding Force K range. We've seen how much it did to the Amoongus. It's about that much. It, it might be close, but I think it would be uh, enough. And because the Torkoal didn't fall asleep, it can also add the Eruption damage. That's enough to make sure that something like Landorus can't... Uh, come in and take this. I also think it's interesting to note, in the last game, there was no Incineroar from uh, Wolf. Wasn't yeah. used. Uh, could be the same uh, case again. I'm sure we've seen it on screen already, whether what that fourth Pokemon is in the back. Uh, but yeah, Ben now is in that position. Has both attackers on the field, ready to pump out a bunch of damage. The Focus Sash is burnt. The health of this Water-type Amoongus is burnt, but it did cost three full turns of Trick Room. Just two left. Ben will switch out the Torkoal. 
uh, wants to be able to reserve that sun for later on in case Wolf does opt for a rain dance here, as well as be able to reset the move that Torkoal has locked itself into. Tornadus will protect itself here as the Indeedy takes the field. Amoongus will also protect here, trying to stall out another turn of Trick Room and see what... Well, I mean, it's pretty clear what's going to happen, the expanding force, but really scouting to see what that Torkoal is going to do, whether it was going to stay in or switch out. Well, and Burn's one of the two turns yeah, of Trick Room yeah. left, so now we're down to the last turn of Trick Room. I think this switch is smart from Ben. You understand that Hatterene is doing all the work that is necessary, so NDD can come in here. You can try another attempt to wake up. If expanding force just picks up this... Uh, double KO, then it's just a free attempt for NDD to wake up. And then you have probably the right two Pokemon. If you're going to try to get a second Trick Room, it's going to be very difficult to get a second Trick Room with these, with the weakened NDD. Um, but these are the right two Pokemon to do it. Hatterene uses Expanding Force here, will get the KO on the Tornadus. Ew, and Moon oh, hangs on with just one hit point! That is a huge survival right there for Wolf. That one hit point as Amoongus will follow up and knock out the Indeedee with a Sludd Bump. So huge survival right there from that Amoongus uh, being able to pick up the scraps with that Indeedee KO as the Twisted Dimensions return to normal. And the Psychic Train's gone too. Yeah, Psycho Train also gone. Indeedee will not be able to reset it. Things were looking pretty difficult for Ben either way there. If Amoongus had gone down, it would have been Fluttermane and Landers coming on the field. A Dazzling Gleam plus Sludge Bomb double up kind of deals with anything on Ben's board. Now, though, Amoongus only has got that KO, and but comes in with only, stays on the field with only one HP, uh, very weakened. Uh, ben will be able to likely put out the Urshifu and threaten, um, you know, there's no protection against the Sucker Punch now. There's, and a Choice Band Sucker Punch should be enough damage to pick up a KO on Fluttermane, which makes that difficult. It could be feasible to get a second Trick Room here. There's so many options from both players. It can be Sucker Punch, it can be damage into Amoongus, it can be Trick Room, and it can be uh, trying to preserve Hatterene by switching it out while Urshifu goes after Fluttermane. It can be Rage Powder to move over the Sucker Punch and just Dazzling Gleam, which picks up a KO onto the Urshifu and picks up a bunch of damage on Hatterene, but it's just a free avenue for Trick Room to go back up again. It'd be a much weakened Trick Room. It'd be uh, the Sun uh, close to expiring and Torkoal down to 50% uh, health, Hatterene without Psychic Train to boost the expansion course, but it would be a path to a second trick room. Tough decisions right now coming from both sides. Uh, both players have to think this turn out. It is going to be a an extremely crucial turn here. As the turn moves on, Amoongus will use Rage Powder, but what does the Urshifu over on Ben's side decide to do? Looks like it did go for a Sucker Punch, does get redirected and failing into that Amoongus slot. And here comes Fluttermane using Shadow Ball, connects into that Hattering slot. Gonna do some damage and get the one-hit KO there. So Wolf just slowly picking apart Ben's team. Now it's gonna come down to the Urshifu over on Ben's side, as well as that damage uh, Torkoal in the back. Well, that, as... that just wraps up the game. Yeah. The Urshifu is choice band locked into Sucker Punch. Amoongus can continue to just Rage Powder, redirect those Sucker Punches. Torkoal is at 50% health. It will not be able to take a Protosynthesis boosted Shadow Ball. It'll just go down to that. Uh, means that Ben will should never get another attack off in this game. Ben took the stab. The Rage Powder wouldn't come out. The Sucker Punch would be enough damage to pick up the KO on Fluttermane, but it didn't work. Rage Powder redirected it. Urshifu missed its and chance it to is. attack and does just concede. Battle's will be moving on to the final Finals. Wolf Glick, finalist here in Orlando, trying to defend that title.